Hey, Flip Geometry, how you doing? We are ready to jump into Chapter 4. We're looking at the angles of triangles. This is a, uh, a vocabulary-rich unit, um, and so this first lesson is just going to be a whole ton of definitions. So I'm sorry if your hand falls off, uh, but you will need these definitions for the rest of the chapter and the rest of this study. So here we go. Let's get ready to define a whole bunch of things. First three definitions have to do with naming a triangle based on the measure of its angles. If all the angles of a triangle are less than 90 degrees, then we call it an acute triangle, not a cute triangle as opposed to others that are ugly, but an <laughs> acute triangle, which means all of the angles of the triangle are less than 90 degrees. Um, the, uh, the second way to name a triangle according to the measure of its angles is if it's a right triangle. A right triangle has one 90 degree angle, okay? So it can't have more than one, and we'll discover in a little bit that the sum of the interior angles of a triangle is 180. So if one of them is 90, then the other two obviously are not. Um, but if the triangle has at least one 90 degree angle, then it's a right triangle. An obtuse triangle is a triangle that has at least one measure greater than 90 degrees. So uh, if, if the largest angle of a triangle is more than 90, then it's obtuse. Okay, so um, acute, right, and obtuse. Some other terms that you need when we're talking about triangles um, is to be able to name two sides uh, as legs and one as the hypotenuse. This is most useful when we're talking about a right triangle. The two sides of a right triangle that are at a 90 degree angle to each other are called legs. And the third side uh, is called the hypotenuse. And we'll need this in a little bit for measuring. So legs and hypotenuse. You have already seen the Pythagorean theorem before in math. This is not news to you, but we are going to remind you of it here. And uh, we're going to apply it now quite a bit in geometry. So the Pythagorean theorem states that the sum of the squares of the legs of a right triangle is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. So um, what we're talking about here is if you take a side of a triangle, a leg of a triangle, and square it and add that to this leg squared, then you get the square of the length of the hypotenuse. Here we have AC squared plus BC squared equals AB squared. And they're giving it to you with the proper notation having named the points of this triangle, A, B, and C. You'll also sometimes see the Pythagorean theorem just called A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And there they're talking about a side A squared plus this side B squared equals the hypotenuse c squared okay you'll see it both ways more terminology if you are naming triangles you can name them by the angle measure or you can name them by the lengths of the sides of the triangle if if all the le the legs of a triangle have a different length then we call it scalene if two of the legs of a triangle have the same length we call it isosceles and if three of the legs of a triangle have the same length, we call it equilateral. So um, iso means the same as or in the middle. Um, and equilateral, equal. So here all the sides are equal. Here two sides are equal. And then scalene would be none of the sides are equal. Okay. If you have an isosceles triangle, there's some terminology that you will want to be able to use. If you have an isosceles triangle like this one here, GFH, and GF is congruent to GH, then these two congruent sides of an isosceles triangle are called the legs of the isosceles triangle. And this third side down here that is not congruent we call the base. Now it's helpful that in this particular drawing the base is on the bottom. Of course that need not be the case. We could draw this isosceles uh, triangle in any orientation and then dissimilar side would still be the base, okay? So therefore, this is called the vertex angle. It's the angle at the top of the triangle if the base is at the bottom. Um, and the other two angles are called base angles because they're the angles near the base, okay? So this is isosceles triangle terminology. Alrighty, if you are doing math with the angles inside a triangle, it's important to note that all of the angles inside the triangle add up to 180 degrees. The triangle angle sum theorem states that the sum of the measures of the angles of any triangle is 180 degrees. So if I know 1 and 2, I can calculate what 3 is. 
because I could add them together and subtract from 180. Okay, so the measure of all the angles inside a triangle is, uh, is 180 degrees when we add them up. There are some additional facts that fall out of that theorem, and so there are some corollaries to that theorem. One is that, uh, one is that I missed my slide up, there you go. Uh, one is that the acute angles of a right triangle are complementary. So a right triangle, remember, is 90 degrees, and it has two other angles. And if all the other angles, if all the angles add up to 180 and one of them is 90 degrees, then the other two have to add up to 90 degrees as well to complete the 180. So one corollary of the sum of the interior angles of a triangle being 180 degrees is that if it's a right triangle, two of the angles add up to 180, uh, sorry, add up to 90. They are complements of each other. Another corollary is that each angle in an equilateral triangle has a measure of 60 degrees. So if all the measures are the same and all the measures add up to 180, then each individual angle has to be a third of 180 or 60 degrees. Another theorem is that if I know that two of the angles inside two similar triangles are congruent to each other, then the third angle must also be congruent. Um, so if angle A here is congruent to angle X, and if angle Y is congruent to angle B, then I know that C must also be congruent to Z because all the measures of the angles add up to 180. Um, and so if this is the same thing here and this is the same thing here, then the sum of these angles is the same in both triangles. And the difference from that sum to 180 degrees is the same for the two triangles. And so the other third angle must also be congruent. So let's do some examples. Um, we're going to look at these two triangles in this figure here. And it's asking us to find the measure of all numbered angles. So let's do angle one first. Angle one is part of this triangle here. And 36 and 60 are the known measurements of the other angles inside that triangle. And so 36 and 60 add up to 96. And all of the angles inside that triangle must add up to 180. So 180 minus 96 gives me the measure of angle one, which is 84 degrees. So I know now that measure one, sorry, measure of angle one is 84 degrees. Let's look at two. Well, for number two, I can say that the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two is 180 degrees. Why do I know that? Well, because they are a linear pair. They form a straight line together. And so if one is 84, then two is the difference between 84 and 180, which would be 96. Two here is 96. Now, it'll come up in a little bit and I'll explain to you why, but this is a good example of something called an exterior angle. Notice that this is 96 and these two together is 96. Just make a mental note that these two things add up to the exterior angle here. Okay, we'll explain why in a little bit. Um, measure of angle three then. So measure of angle one and measure of angle two we know. Let's find measure of angle three. Measure of angle 2 plus angle 3 is uh, plus 45 degrees is 180. So I know 2 is 84, and I know this one is 45. 84 plus 45 is going to give me, I'm sorry, 96. 96 plus 45 um, is going to give me uh, what these two angles are together, and the difference between that and, and 180 is going to be angle 3. So angle 3 plus 141. Uh, it gives me 180 degrees, so measure of angle 3 must have been 39 degrees. All right. So that's just an example of what you could do. Just out of, out of uh, intellectual interest, um, you could have also found the measure of angle 3 by saying in the big triangle here, this is 36, this is 105. 36 plus 105 is also 141, which would then make measure of angle 3 39 to get you to 180. Could have done it that way too. Okay. Several more definitions here. An exterior angle is the angle of a triangle that it form. Uh, sorry, the angle of a triangle that forms a linear pair with one of the angles in the triangle. So, angle one and angle two are linear pairs. They form a straight line. Um, it is outside the triangle. It forms a linear pair with one of the angles inside the triangle. So. Uh, a, a easy way to see an exterior angle would be just to draw the side of a triangle too long, pass by the vertex of the triangle and keep drawing, and now you've drawn an exterior angle. Okay, I could get the same measure of exterior angle if I had continued this line up 
and I were measuring right here. So an exterior angle is just the angle formed uh, by drawing a, a triangle segment too far and finding a linear pair with the vertical with an, with an angle inside the triangle. If you have an exterior angle, then you also have remote interior angles. So if angle two is the exterior angle, angle one is its linear pair. Angles four and five are remote interior angles. They're inside the triangle, so they're interior. And they are not the linear pair with the exterior angle, so they're remote. They're at a distance, right? At a distance interior angle. So from angle two, four and five are remote interior angles. Defined all of those terms to be able to get to this theorem, that the measure of an exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the measures of its two remote interior angles. And I told you to hold this in your brain from the example a couple of moments ago. So when you add up the um, angles in the remote angles of a triangle, their sum is the same as the exterior angle of that triangle. So let's use that here. So find the value of x and the measures of w, angle w and angle xyz. Um, we have here 64 degrees given to us, and we have here a, an algebraic expression. This is 5x plus 3. Well, these are remote interior angles to this exterior angle. They must add up to the same thing here. So I should be able to say 5x plus 3 plus 64 equals 13x minus 5. Okay, So I'm going to uh, combine my like terms over here. And now I'm going to rearrange so I can move the 5x and the 5 over. And I get 8x equals 72. Then I'm going to use the multiplicative property of equality. And I'm going to find that x equals 9. So now I can go back in and plug in 9 here and here. And I will find that angle w is 5 times 9 plus 3, which is 48. And I will find that xyz is 13 times 9 minus 5 which is 112 degrees. Um, and you can just double check that you did this kind of thing right, because if this is 112, and this is 48, and this is 64, then 64 plus 48 should be 112, and it is. Okay? So that is an example of how to use that theorem. And that is the end of it. There's a lot of definitions there. Sorry about all of that. But you will be using these for a long time. So please let me know if you have any questions when we meet together in class tomorrow. Until then, God bless you. Jesus loves you, and so do I. Good night.